Hey guys, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. It's time for some more running news. Story number one today surrounds some of those recent delays to Nike shoe releases. So it could be down to some congested ports apparently. Normally when there's a congested port, you need to get the plunger out. I think it's been adding up to like three weeks of delays to some releases, certainly in North America. Over the pandemic, really, the whole time, it's just been delay after delay. I know that it's affected other shoe releases too. Lots of basketball shoes and retros and things like that have been delayed over the pandemic. Sometimes quite considerable delays too. In other Nike news, it does seem that profits have increased very slightly over the last year, but I think sales growth was significantly lower than what they expected. I think it's probably with all those shops that are shut mainly across Europe. I think there's still some stores open in North America and in Canada, but yeah, I think across Europe most stuff's still shut and looks like more countries are going back into lockdown. Interestingly, when they released all of this financial information, their share price dropped by 4%. I found that quite humorous. I think many stores in the US have been late to receive new items from the manufacturer. I think in North America their sales have dropped about 10% compared to the previous year. Obviously last year was a year that nobody really wants to remember. Well, I mean, lots of great things did happen in it. You can't lose sight of those. I mean, little Fergus appeared and he's safe. That's the main thing. I just hope you guys out there are staying safe. I think container shortages, driver shortages, and also these backlogged ports have been part of the reason. It's affected the release of that Invincible run and also the non-existent release of the Vomero 15 in North America. That just never released. It's really weird. Gotta be honest, there's loads and loads of Nike stuff available at the moment here in the UK. If you want to pick up the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent, they're easy to get now. I know a few people on the net mentioned to me, how come? Why are there so many in the UK? I just don't think people want them. They did expect European stores to pick up again in April, but yeah, all the news that's coming out from Europe at the moment suggests that they're going back into lockdown, certainly France, Poland and Germany by the looks of it. Online sales just seem to be the safest option right now. Story 2. Talking of the swoosh, Nike is set to release a new, I guess it's a leisure shoe, but it's inspired by running shoes of the past. I reckon it could lend itself to some future innovations. You know what Nike are like? They test stuff out in some of their sort of concept shoes and then it slowly works its way into their running lineup. Look at the use of those oversized air units in the LeBron 1617. They made their way into the Alpha Fly. And I think this new shoe could do the same. The Nike Air Max Pre Day is the name of the shoe. Features a profile in the upper that's very similar to the Daybreak and the Tailwind from back in the late 70s. And also a Bowman style waffle outsole too. It's got like a mishmash of the waffle racer, the Tailwind, and also an Air Max. I think this one's only set to release on the sneakers app by all accounts. I think it's something to do with the Air Max day that's coming up. A fully exposed air unit here in the heel, perhaps reducing the weight a little bit. Also enabling a bit more rebound without that foam caging it in. I think the upper and the midsole are made of almost 100% recycled materials. It looks a little bit like a reverse almost of the Tempo Next Percent and the Alpha Fly, doesn't it? Nike seem to shift really quickly between all out air in the heel and in the forefoot. They just can't make up their minds. I mean, the Pegasus 37, for example, had the Zoom Air in the forefoot and nothing in the heel. Remember, the Terra Kyga had it in the heel rather than in the forefoot. I find those AirPods great when they're exposed without anything surrounding them just felt a bit dead and pointless in the 37. I know it's Zoom Air in there, which is a little bit different, but still didn't really feel any major benefit from it. I think Zoom Air's getting a little bit left behind with the advent of some of these very cushioned and very light foams that we see now in the midsoles. Loads of other companies are kind of overtaking them a little bit. I just think they need to bench Zoom Air for a little while and perhaps try some other stuff out, which is maybe what's happening with this new Air Max style shoe. What do you think? Is Zoom Air a bit old hat now? Are some of the new foams overtaking? Let me know in the comments. Mm. Before we get to the next story, it really helps the channel out if you'd hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos. And you can help us manipulate that algorithm a little bit and push the channel out to more people if you give this video a thumbs up like. Story three, New Balance have unveiled the purple and colossal 
Fuel Cell RC Elite 2. And I gotta say, it looks rather different to the original version, doesn't it? A greater stack of foam here underfoot with a completely redesigned outsole. It certainly is a departure. The carbon plate remains though. And the profile of the shoe, for me, takes a little bit from the Adios Pro. Certainly in terms of the heel stack, and maybe the fuel cell TC in terms of the upper. I think so much so that actually people thought that this, when the image leaked at least, was a new version of the fuel cell TC. Early reports say that the heel stack is 40 millimeters in this one. I'm sure in my UK size 11 and a half, which I typically go for in New Balance shoes, it's gonna be even more than that. I'm gonna to have to get the wood shaver out and make the frames of the doors a little bit higher. I bet in my size it's gonna be about 50 millimeters or something like that, it's just bonkers. Tim Gross, myself and Andy the Fod Runner, I think we're just gonna look like some sort of gigantors if we wear this shoe. Hopefully there'll be a time later this year, maybe we can all wear them and stand aside of each other. That would be cool, I look forward to that. More foam and yeah, I think with the amount of foam here, you might be able to rise higher than Vince Carter in these Fuel Cell RC Elite 2s. Looks like they've carved away part of the midsole in the outsole area. Did you catch my drift? Maybe to bring the weight down a little bit. I'm interested to see how stable this shoe is though, because the RC Elite was okay, stable enough. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the 4%. I think the big advantage to me of the Fuel Cell RC Elite original was the weight. It was just so low. I think it was about 238 or something in my UK size 11 and a half. Nice and light. I mean, I've got steam liner sized feet and it was still a nice light race shoe. I did see the weight for a US size 10 and a half was about 242 grams. So that's about eight and a half ounces. So that's already more than what the original version of the shoe was in my size. Yeah, it's a bit of a letdown. I'm not sure I want more foam in it. The other one was fine. Just needs to improve the upper a little bit. It's the same old story. Just put more foam in, more, more, more. That's what everyone else is doing. That's why Saucony have done well last year, isn't it? They got a new shoe line out. They had the Shift, the Speed and the Pro. And those shoes are very good. They're very, very innovative. They've just gone their own way with it and it works. If you just follow everybody else, it's just not gonna work, is it? So I can imagine in my size, it's gonna be a little bit heavier again. Yeah. I think for a race shoe, I don't wanna go any higher than about 250, probably. It almost makes me think that they're trying to outdo the Alpha Fly, but I mean, you've got massive propulsion pistons in that one, and that accounts for a bit of the weight, doesn't it, so. And $225, I dread to think what it's gonna be over here. I mean, the Fuel Cell RC Elite, was 210 pounds over in the UK. So goodness knows what this one might be. Mm. Story four. So with the Olympics on the horizon, I was very interested to read some quotes from Seb Co. You know, that famous distance dude. He reckons there could be a number of world records on some of the running distances within the Olympics. But he doesn't just think they're down to new shoe design. He believes there's obviously a number of factors there. I think they were trying to get him to talk down the lines of the, the shoes are getting the world records, but we all know it's the effort that these people put in. Of course, we've seen times falling, world records set recently, some incredible times, in fact. I think you've got to look at it from the fact that a new shoe design certainly isn't going to hinder a runner if they're looking to try and obtain a new world record or a time. I think it's all about lightness, really. Certainly when you're on the track, trying to have something that presents very little weight to the runner is good. And it's all down to their engine really. We've seen new records in the 5k, the 10k, both the women's and men's one hour races as well. I think Subco pretty much mentioned that the new shoe designs might be a bit of a spice or an ingredient into the mix. I mean, you've got skill, hard work, talent, and of course, really good coaching. That coaching's dialed in now for all of those runners. I really do hope that we get some Olympic stuff this year. I know that there's talk that they're not gonna allow any people sort of traveling in maybe, or volunteers from other places. I just hope it's still got that same feel. I mean, there is something wonderful about having a packed stadium, isn't there? Perhaps that Viperfly would have been a step too far. I bet you though, it will resurface in years to come. Michael just sort of put it away in some special area and bring it back out again in a few years when everybody's kind of forgotten about all that stuff. Do you think that the new generation of track spikes that have been released recently are gonna give runners an unfair advantage? Do you think it's unfair that there's been so many world records and national records broken? Is it 
a bit down to the shoes. I personally don't think it is. I think it's down to a better training, better nutrition. Let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm keen to hear your views. That's all the running news for this week. A quick musical epilogue for you. You can still call it the interlude if you want, but I guess epilogue fits better. I suppose. With all this talk of shipping and travelling and truckers and stuff earlier, it reminded me of an album by Modest Mouse. The Lonesome Crowded West was released back in 1997 and has always been one of my favourites. I think it's something to do with the off-kilter guitars and just interest there. There's so much interest there. The drumming as well. The drumming's just so good on Modest Mouse albums. They always have some sort of point of interest there and you can think, oh yeah, even if you don't particularly like the track. Teeth Like God's Shoeshine is obviously a fantastic track and I'm a particular fan of convenient parking. I'm useless at reversing, so I really like convenient parking, so it's always been one of my favourites on this album. The super long track, Trucker's Atlas, has always been one of my faves too. I think as a musician who's spent hours and hours of his life travelling around on the roads, you can kind of understand this one. It has got that kind of motivating feel, like you're in some sort of vehicle and motoring along. There's a more poignant track towards the end as well, Bankrupt on Selling. I really love Isaac's vocal delivery, it's so good. So unique and characterful. Do go and check this one out. The Lonesome Crowded West by Modest Mouse. All right, it's time for me to rock and roll out of here. Thanks for staying with me to the very end of the video, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos. It does help us out too on the channel. If you give this video a thumbs up, like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.